One day when I was in Boy Scouts, some friends and I were tasked with properly folding an American flag. For those that don't know, there is a very specific way you are supposed to do this. However, we were not taking the task very seriously. We didn't take anything very seriously at that age, being in the it's cool to be an edgy rebel phase of our youth. So we were laughing and fumbling around with the flag and kept messing up the flag folding process. It was at this point that one of the adult leaders stomped over to us, snatched the flag out of our hands, and threw it on the floor. Everyone was stunned into silence. Rule number one of handling the flag, never let it touch the ground. And yet here, before the entire troop, an adult leader who was a Vietnam veteran had intentionally thrown the American flag on the ground. He turned to us in anger and said, People have fought and died for this country. People have fought and died beneath these colors. But it's not a piece of cloth they fight and die for. It's an idea of what this country represents, of what this country means, of a freedom most don't have. It doesn't matter if you go through the motions of folding a piece of cloth if you don't understand and respect the idea behind the cloth. So in silence, we picked the flag off the ground and folded it correctly. A few days ago, Senator Stephen Daines of Montana uh. proposed a constitutional amendment, not a law, that would give Congress the power to make burning a flag as an act of protest illegal. Now, you might be asking yourself, wait a minute, Sitch, isn't there some kind of amendment that prevents the government from making flag burning illegal? I swear I've heard about it. Like it's one of those famous amendments that everyone always talks about. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Now personally, I can't really foresee a scenario where I would want to burn the American flag as an act of protest. And I don't really like it either. But you know, that's the whole point of the First Amendment. Just because something offends you doesn't mean it should be illegal. That's kind of the whole point of standing up against the regressive SJW types who want to outlaw any and all things that offend their delicate sensibilities. But putting that all aside for a moment, Danes is full of crap because he knows full well that passing a flag-burning amendment would be just as impossible as getting Antifa to stop beating up people in the streets. <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. Some. Maybe Danes was just too busy eating paste in the corner during civics class when the teacher explained how constitutional amendments pass. You see, he'd need two-thirds of both the House and the Senate to vote yes on violating the First Amendment. And three-fourths of every state legislature. And considering they can't even pass an amendment guaranteeing all Americans are treated the same regardless of sex... It ain't gonna happen. But Danes doesn't care if this passes or not, because it's purely a political move. A way for Danes to say, Republicans who want to protect the flag are good, and the Democrats who don't are bad. Danes is just using the American flag, a symbol he claims he wants to protect, as a political football. Now, maybe you're saying, well, it could be a symbolic gesture. Well, maybe. But it would be a certain ironic hypocrisy that Danes would be involved in a purely symbolic gesture in order to outlaw another purely symbolic gesture. Now Trump seeing a good political opportunity also jumped on the flag burning should be illegal bandwagon. I guess Trump's executive order on protecting free speech on college campuses only applies to speech that he doesn't find offensive. Mr. President, get down! But then, someone else took the rhetoric further. Candace Owens. Congratulations, you're getting worse. Yes, that Candace Owens, the one who's a walking contradiction, whose entire shtick revolves around criticizing black identity politics and its current adherence to the Democratic Party, while of course her own success is mostly dependent on her own identity as a black woman who doesn't like the Democrats. And the solution that she's prescribing to the black community is simply to replace one form of identity politics with another. 
just as the far regressive left will demonize an entire group of people simply for being white and or male, Candace will also demonize an entire group of people simply for being a Democrat or daring to be left of center. Now, some people like to call Candace Owens a grifter, and I'm one of those people. Because her first big claim to fame was trying to start a website called Social Autopsy, where if you said anything problematic, someone could take a screenshot and submit it to Candace Owens' website, and there in an easily searchable archive would be all the problematic things you ever said, next to your name and picture. After Candace's project was ripped apart from both sides, though more prominently SJW in chief Zoe Quinn, Candace had a very public Twitter meltdown about the whole thing, and social autopsy was cancelled when organizations backing the project decided eh, they didn't really want anything to do with her. Then a few months later, she came out as red pilled against the liberal menace. Now, regardless of what you think about Candace, she's not stupid. She knows exactly what to say, what red meat to throw to her base to get them all riled up. That's why she always words her tweets in this incredibly divisive, us versus them, my team good, other team bad way. I worry about um, you as well, to be honest. Yeah, people tell me that all the because time. Because the left are more violent than even ISIS. I know. The left are more violent than even ISIS. I know. This all appeals to our lowest and most base instincts. So of course Owens couldn't possibly pass up a chance to virtue signal to her base on the flag burning issue and tweeted out, If I were president, the punishment for burning the US flag would be the renunciation of citizenship. No jail time, no fine, simply one year to liquidate your assets and get the hell out of our country. In exchange, we'd extend citizenship to a hard-working, legal immigrant. Now, I would have thought that even the people who are against burning the flag would say... Alright, let's everybody just calm the fuck down. But over 80,000 people liked this insipid tweet. And it makes me sit here and ask, what are we fighting for? All the cries about not censoring speech from the right. Of the dangers of censorship. Just throw it right out the window, Candace. I'm not sure if I have to explain this to anyone, but I will if it needs saying. Being offended by someone burning the American flag is fine, just as being offended by an insensitive joke is fine. It's when that person turns their feeling of being offended into action, demanding that the offending person must be removed, silenced, or locked away. That's where the problem lies. Believing that someone should not be allowed to engage in a non-violent protest, like burning the American flag, is no different than believing someone should not be allowed to make a joke or discuss an idea. There is no difference. You can't in good faith support one without supporting the other. Now I was happy to see that almost every YouTuber or person I follow on Twitter mock Owens relentlessly for this insane and stupid tweet. But let those 80,000 likes burn into your brain. Because most people don't have principles and values that they live their life by. Most people don't judge others fairly with a criteria that applies equally to everyone. Most people just want the things that they want. Just want to destroy their perceived enemies and elevate their perceived friends for their own gain. And they don't care about little things like morality or creating a stable and just society. Now I have to be honest, this tweet from Candace makes me upgrade her status from grifter to force acting for evil. Whether she actually believes what she's saying or not is irrelevant. Now it used to be right-wing political correctness that dominated society, pushing censorship under the guise of keeping society and tradition safe. It used to be the left that was the party fighting for free speech and against censorship. But recently, things have changed. Get the supporter out of here! I need some bustle over here! Since the left firmly controls the mainstream culture, all the authoritarians who had been lurking in the left have become activated. And they push censorship under the guise of caring for those they believe are underprivileged. This has led some on the right to believe there is something inherently pro-censorship in the left wing, and that the right wing is inherently pro-free speech. Let this remind you, that is not the case. Merely, the right wing pro-censorship PC advocates 
have gone into hiding. Since they don't have the cultural power to enforce their desires, they simply stand next to you, parroting all the things you say and believe about free speech. But not because they actually believe in free speech, only because it currently helps them. These authoritarians are only waiting to be activated, waiting for the right time to strike. We must always be vigilant against these kinds of people, regardless of what side they claim to be on. As the last 10 years should teach us, there's no political party that as a whole believes in free speech. There's only individual people.